The Delta variant of COVID-19 is spreading rapidly around the world, and health officials are calling it the super spreader variant. It's about a twice as transmissible as the original COVID-19 virus. And experts emphasize, however, that vaccine protection remains very strong against this Delta infection, which means those who are not vaccinated are at an increased risk. So what does this mean for our country, where less than 10% of our population is fully vaccinated? And how can we best protect ourselves from this highly transmissible strain? On the program today, we'll take a closer look at the Delta variant. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Welcome to MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Let's say someone gets infected by the Delta variant. Public health experts estimate that patient can spread it easily to eight people. This is compared to the one or two people from the original COVID-19 strain. The Delta variant has the highest transmissibility of all the variants we've seen so far. It's the most aggressive and the most contagious. And as the new strain spreads, we need to take steps to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe and protected. Let's welcome our guests for today. With us is Dr. John Wong. He's an epidemiologist and the senior technical advisor of Epimetrics. Also with us is Dr. Ron Jean Solante. He is the head of the Adult Infectious Diseases and Tropical Medicine at the San Lazaro Hospital. Questions are being asked with regards to this new variant, the Delta variant, which is the most prominent strain of COVID-19 today. Now, the strain has mutations in its spike protein that makes it easier for it to infect humans. I'll start first the, the discussion with Dr. John. What do the viewers need to know with regards to this Delta variant? It's twice as transmissible as the original strain and about 60% uh, more transmissible than the Alpha variant, now, which caused the surge last March. Uh, second, uh, it manifests as different symptoms also. Uh, whereas before, we would have uh, fever, cough, loss of smell, and some gastrointestinal symptoms. Now, there's less of cough and loss of, loss of smell, but more of headaches, sore throat, runny nose, no? more of a cold-like symptoms. Dr. Jean, let's remind our viewers, what are the symptoms uh, that could be unique with this Delta variant? And what are some of the symptoms that are similar with that of uh, previous variants? Overall, they still manifest with the general symptoms of fever, cough, and then you have myalgia, and then fatigue, body malaise, no? Although in this, uh, there are new data that you have less of the anosmia and the achusia, but more or less uh, for, 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 the, for these general symptoms, it's still very difficult to, to really say this is a Delta variant and this is not a Delta variant. Can the symptoms for the Delta variant also be very mild, uh, uh, especially those that can mimic uh, that of an allergic rhinitis type of symptom? Can this actually already be uh, COVID? Any individual manifesting with an upper respiratory tract infection COVID can, should always be the differential, no? But once you have fever and cough, no? aside from the rhinitis or uh, rhinorrhea, then uh, something that, that you should be alarmed because uh, might be, don't have an upper respiratory tract, but beginning pneumonia, especially with the onset of yung medyo hirap ka ng huminga, no? Now, aside from the Delta variant, there are other highly transmissible strains emerging like the Lambda variant naman out of South America. And uh, these manifestations, these variants are part of the very nature of viruses. Now, for as long as a chunk of people across the world are unvaccinated, new strains of viruses will continue to develop. Dr. John, can you explain this to us, as well as uh, the notion of herd immunity now, uh, now that the Delta variant is here, which ultimately is what we hope to achieve, but has uh, expectations changed now that uh, all of these emerging variants are, are, are coming up? Herd immunity is the time when sufficient number of people have been vaccinated, such that even the unvaccinated are protected, no? because the virus cannot... Uh, spread throughout the population because the vaccinated people are are blocking them no, from the unvaccinated. Herd immunity, of course, is dependent on the transmissibility of the virus. No? 
the original strain had an R of uh, three, so that translated to a herd immunity threshold no, of 67%, no? meaning uh, if you vaccinate 67%, you protect the unvaccinated. But with the Delta strain, the R0 is now six, no? so the, herd, the new herd immunity threshold is 83%. Uh, but you also have to adjust that, of course, with the uh, vaccine efficacy. With lower vaccine efficacy, your herd immunity threshold has to go up. No? So uh, with the vaccines we're using, we have, we have about an average vaccine efficacy of about 72%. No? So that means we practically have to uh, vaccinate uh, the entire population. Ultimately, what we want is to get back to normal. Uh, a significant portion of the population needs to be vaccinated if we want to achieve this. Now, here at home, less than 10% of our population is fully vaccinated so far. And now, the Department of Health believes there's a Delta variant community transmission in the country. Dr. Jean, this question's for you. Uh, with regard to the government's response in dealing with the Delta variant, what is seen as the priority right now? The priority now is to really slow the transmission of the Delta variant in the community. And that's why there is an, we, we are now declaring uh, an ECQ because with less mobility, you'll also slow the transmission. Less number of people will be exposed, so you'll have less number of people also being infected. So that's the, that's the priority of this uh, uh, it's slowing down the Delta variant. Dr. Jean, when it comes to transmissibility, are we still seeing the same pattern with the previous variants with this Delta? Yung mga nakakahawa pa rin is using mass transportation, uh, being in crowded places uh, uh, outside the home, or are we seeing a different shift? We're seeing both the household and the non-household uh, transmission. So when I say that, when you are out uh, home, then you, your potential contact or possible transmission will be in the transportation, will be in the workplace, and also in the market or in, in groceries. When you're at home, your potential transmission also will be with the other family members. Dr. Jean, what are we advised to do to help curb the spread of COVID-19, especially with the Delta variant uh, being the dominant strain now? Does the government have any tips or guidelines uh, for us? The most important is still the following the minimum health safety protocol, wearing of your face mask and face shield, no? protecting yourself even uh, especially at, uh, in, in areas where possible risk of transmission. The most important here is also the vaccination. No? So we continue to have the rollout even with ECQ. We want to target, the NCR wants to target the 50% uh, full vaccination. Currently, we are now at 20%. We want to target the A2 and the A3. Why? Because the A2 and the A3 are the highly vulnerable. If they get the infection, they are the ones that will be getting into the hospital and developing more severe infection. And these are the people that can also overwhelm the healthcare facility. We'll discuss the COVID-19 vaccine and how effective it is against the Delta variant. Stay with us here on MedTalk Health Talk. You're watching CNN Philippines. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Across the globe, many of us are experiencing a surge in COVID-19 cases due to the Delta variant. But we're also seeing the power of the COVID-19 vaccine. Countries where vaccination rate is relatively high, like the US, the UK, uh, and Israel, prove how a complete dose of a COVID-19 vaccine protects from serious illness even against the Delta variant. So if you have any hesitations, we want to provide honest and clear information on how these vaccines can help. Dr. John, can you walk us through how the COVID-19 vaccine works and how is it still effective even with the Delta variant? They all introduce uh, the spike protein or produce the, the spike protein inside the body. And this stimulates the immune system. So the immune system produces antibodies, uh, T cells, and memory cells no, that uh, create our immunity you know, against the virus. The parts that are different are that uh, they have different platforms no, or 
means of introducing the spike protein into the body. You know? So, for example, uh, Pfizer and Moderna uses MR mRNA. You know? uh, AZ, j and j Gamalaya, uh, and Cancido uses adenovirus. Novavax uses the protein spike itself, and Sinovac uses the inactivated virus. You know? So this is how the vaccines spread. These vaccines save lives. In our country, a majority of the vaccines that have been distributed are Sinovac, and many have voiced their concerns over the efficacy of this vaccine. Dr. John, what's the real story? Um, is it an effective vaccine to take? Uh, with Pfizer and AstraZeneca, we saw that we see that uh, two doses are more effective than one dose. No? One dose is not enough no, against the Delta variant. Uh, we also see that uh, uh, efficacy against hospitalization is still very high. You no. Know? Uh, against the Delta variant, even for uh, a single dose. No? Uh, so this is true for AstraZeneca and Pfizer. Uh, there are not a lot of studies on the other vaccines, no? but we can assume that uh, other, uh, other vaccines will follow the same pattern. No? Now, whatever, vaccine, whatever vaccine we get, no? we should get uh, both doses. No? We should complete the two-dose series, uh, and we should get them as soon as possible. No? Uh, mm -hmm. We shouldn't be uh, choosing vaccines, no? Because uh, all vaccines, man, are have high efficacy against hospitalization and death. Dr. Jean, um, what data do we know already about uh, how the current vaccines and how 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 effective are they enough to protect us uh, alone with with their two shots? Uh, are booster shots already recommended? Uh, is there data about uh, uh, adding a different brand of vaccine? What do we know now? First, I would like to mention no, there are already data coming from uh, different vaccines that the the protection, the antibody that is from those that are that were vaccinated will last from six months. There are those lasting eight months, and there are those who last nine months. No? And uh, I think when you give a booster, you have to look into that particular data, how long that, that vaccine can, can protect you. Okay? So at this point in time, our uh, we don't have yet recommendation uh, for giving a booster shot. Our target is really to inoculate everyone. Today, there are people who are hesitant to get vaccinated against COVID-19 because of the side effects that come with it. But should that be a hindrance to getting vaccinated? Dr. Jean, what can people expect after their COVID-19 vaccine? I would like to enumerate lang, no? uh, the data coming from the government, the FDA, regarding those fully vaccinated or who have given or received the vaccine. No? Ang, ang great ng adverse event side effect is only less than 5%, no? So between 2 to 3%. And the most common uh, adverse event is really pain at the injection site, mamaga, masakit, minsan parang nilagnat lang, and these are all self-limited. So nawawala lang, no? Wala naman. So in short, uh, these side effects are tolerable, and at uh, so this point, there are no adverse events that... Uh, led to death. But if you're experiencing any of these side effects, uh, one should remember not to panic. There are doctors in those vaccination centers. That's why they ask you to wait uh, for a few minutes, 15 to 30 minutes after you get inoculated to, to check that everything is okay before you leave. Dr. John, what can we do to help relieve some of these side effects na nararamdaman? Uh, although minor, some of them might be concerning to someone who feels them for the first time. For pain, headache, muscle pain, or fever, you can just take paracetamol. No? And also drink, try to drink lots of fluids. Uh, for redness or swelling in the arm, uh, you can put cold compress no? and try to use or exercise your arm. No? Uh, and then for fatigue, no? try to rest. Uh, usually, the side effects are gone in 24 to 48 hours. Health officials were hoping to achieve herd immunity by the end of the year. But with the virulence of the Delta variant today, many more people would have to be vaccinated in order to achieve it. Dr. John, what should the population uh, know in order for the vaccinated to achieve her herd immunity with the current Delta strain circulating and possible other strains in the future, pataas ng pataas na lang ba yung uh, percentage natin bago ma-reach natin ang herd immunity, Dr. John? It will depend on the uh, behavior of the Delta variant. No? Uh, hopefully, no, the ECQ can keep it low 
Uh, <clears throat> but if, if it becomes a dominant strain, uh, it will be very difficult to achieve herd immunity. No? Uh, our goal, therefore, should be to get everyone vaccinated so that we can prevent hospitalizations and deaths. Now, until we reach herd immunity, there are steps that we can take to keep safe and protected. We'll discuss these after a short break. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. So stay with us on CNN Philippines. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk, where your health comes first. After many reports on the Delta variant around the world, our country logged its first local transmission of the highly contagious strain last July 22. Our government is working on boosting our immunization program and curbing the spread of COVID-19. But we need to be proactive and take measures to keep ourselves safe from infection. Dr. Jean, can you remind us again how wearing masks and shields can help keep us safe? Wearing your face mask and face shield, uh, two ways, no? One, uh, if you are carrying the virus, then you decrease the aerosolization, the droplet formation, because you are covering your mouth, and you are covering your nose. So that's why you also decrease the droplets and the airborne transmission. Now, if you are the ones that is inside and in a close space or area, and there is a person inside carrying the virus and will be coughing or sneezing, then with your face mask and face shield, then you are more or less, no, 95% less to get the infection, especially if you will have been wearing that face mask properly and appropriately all the time, including your face shield. And of course, don't forget the, the physical distance is also as important as also wearing your face mask and face shield. Dr. Jean, are there any updated measures that uh, we can take in public spaces uh, to stay protected against this highly transmissible Delta variant? Ventilation is also as important as that, especially if you are in an enclosed space and you are, have a number of people inside that particular room. You have to maintain a very good uh, ventilation, and that's why we, we encourage outdoor activities over that of indoors, especially if you cannot maintain a very good uh, uh, ventilation and uh, interaction uh, with people. If you're talking with people, you're wearing the face mask, facial as much as possible. Uh, you need to lessen also the number of minutes of interaction inside a particular enclosed space. Now, apart from all the protocols in place, a good line of defense against COVID-19 infection or any disease for that matter is boosting your immune system. Dr. John, can you give us uh, more tips to boost our immune system? Madalas na tanong ng ating mga viewers. Uh, how can they take care of their immune system? What are some of the simple lifestyle habits that we should incorporate in our day-to-day? -day? Uh, first is to lower your stress. No? Uh, you can do meditation or controlled breathing exercises. No? Uh, try to improve your sleep habits also. No? Try to get six to seven hours of sleep a night. No? Uh, set a, a regular schedule for bedtime and waking up. No? Avoid screens no? at night. No? Also night eating and exercises no? before bedtime. Uh, take vitamin D supplements. No? Uh, you have a lot of this in fish. No? Uh, egg yolks, mushroom, no? fortified juices. No? Uh, Avoid excessive alcohol consumption also, you know, that decreases or depresses immunity. And finally, you know, eat a balanced diet, you know, uh, exercise you know, at least 30 minutes a day. Now with the more contagious and easily transmissible Delta variant in our country, we need to take every step to protect each other from COVID-19. So getting your COVID-19 vaccine doesn't mean you can't still catch the virus. Vaccinated individuals still need to follow health standards, but it will protect you from severe illness. With that, I'd like to thank epidemiologist Dr. John Wong and infectious disease specialist Dr. Ronji Solante for guiding us as always. And we hope this conversation was helpful for our viewers. On MedTalk Health Talk, we bring you the knowledge and care that you need. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and we'll see you again next time.